Hello everyone, Adrian here. So, it's been a bit of a rough week. Really rough, okay? Believe me when I tell you. Whew, rough. Not gonna get into it. Let's just say that it's been a rough week. So, I am gonna be filming this the Sunday before the album I'm going to be reviewing today is actually released. So forgive me if I don't have a physical copy with me, but it will be arriving pretty soon. So The Awakening is a music project that has been incredibly close to my heart for more than a decade now. I kind of get choked up every time I think about listening to them for the first time when I was about 15 years old. They're just special, incredibly special. They offer the very best of goth music, and it is the creation of one of the kindest, sweetest, most generous, and most talented men to ever walk this earth, Ashton Knight, who I am incredibly blessed and privileged to call a friend, and someone that I'm honored to have been on the same album with a year ago when I made my musical debut with Beauty and Chaos. So this post and the comments on said post Thinking back on it, I will never fail to start, you know, getting all choked up and start blubbering. So thank you, Ashton. You're so incredibly kind. I thought I could at least try to make it through this video without blubbering and carrying on, but uh, nope. Here I go. Get it together. <laughs> thank God I have fantastic eyeshadow primer on. Which, by the way, if you guys are curious, I use the NYX Pigment Primer. It is wonderful for eyeshadow and keeping your lipstick on a little longer. Not sponsored, just throwing it out there as a tip. While The Awakening's previous album, Chasm, was far more acoustic-based than previous works, it feels like this new album, This Alchemy, is a return to the roots of The Awakening. This feels so much like classic The Awakening, but with a truly new twist perfect blending of goth rock and dark wave along with some sparks of industrial. This mixture makes this particular album by The Awakening very dancey and very suitable for a club setting. So because this felt like it harkened back to classic sounds of The Awakening, this made me incredibly nostalgic for The Awakening. I had been listening to some older bits of The Awakening when I was preparing for the release of this album, and I feel that same energy and aesthetic with this one, but it's very new and very fresh. Mind you, The Awakening has been making music since the mid-1990s. While the sound has evolved, it has never lost its spirit. So, for the sake of full transparency, since someone once tried to insinuate that I only review bands that I am friends with on my review of Scarlet Leaves, and that's not even the case, and that wasn't even true in that situation, um, all because they the person who made the insinuation didn't like Scarlet Leaves. Ergo, the only reason why I would review them is because I was friends with the band, even though I said nothing of the sort. Of course. Why are people like this? Yes, I am friends with Ashton Knight of The Awakening, but regardless of that, I would still review his release, whether we were friends or not because I love and adore his music so much and have for many, many years. And anytime I do review a band that I am friends with, either it's like one of the members or all of the members, or if it's just the uh, brainchild of one particular person, it doesn't matter if I'm friends with them or not, I do make that fully transparent with you guys, okay? Now, enough of that nonsense, and let's get on to this review of this incredible new release by The Awakening called This Alchemy. <sighs> so excited. So the album opens with Bitter Bliss. It's an excellent opening to the album, starting with a very slow, gradual buildup with electronic elements and almost weeping synthesizers paired with The Sound of Rain. It's simple yet incredibly effective when Ashton Knight's breathy, stunning, ethereal vocals come in. It just feels like a sigh of relief, but it's also setting you up for what's in store for the rest of the album. It swells beautifully and blends perfectly into the next track. The heavier percussion toward the end really made my heart race with excitement because I had a feeling of what I was getting into. 
Next we have Into the Machine, part one and two. Best way to describe the song, it's a damn good fuck the establishment sort of song. And it was very brilliantly done. Very dancey, very heavy, very rhythmic, and Ashton's voice really steals the show. It's very eloquent in observing the society that we now live in and how it's turned into a culture of self-obsession and how it has consumed just about everything. The second act of the song mellows out but keeps the similar melodic tones echoed on the acoustic guitar with some slight electronic touches. It was lovely. Really liked it. <laughs> this segues very nicely into Zero Down, which feels very aggressive and industrial in the most wonderful way. This talks about the scandals manufactured surrounding celebrity, particularly musicians' deaths, and how those deaths get exploited for profit. I love the little touches of what sound like a pipe organ. Really intense. It's incredibly raw and sinister, and I just love it. Shadow Call follows, and is probably one of my favorite songs on the new album. It starts with some great bass and wonderful synthesized melodies. Again, very dancey, and Ashton's voice is so unbelievably comforting and also sexy in this song. The lower, deeper instrumentation is very dissonant, but in the most pleasant way possible, as only Ashton and a few other musicians that I can think of can do. <laughs> I love the bridge section with how soft Ashton's voice is. It gave me ridiculous goosebumps. It also faded very cohesively into the next track. Winter's Unknown is a really lovely interlude and a turning point for this album. Synthesized strings set the stage for the piano when Ashton's voice enters as very soft and soulful. It may be brief, but it's highly effective. Again, it fades very smoothly into the following song. When the Fear Subsides is next. Another really nice dancey industrial piece, but melodically it is much lighter than previous tracks. So Ashton's voice just keeps getting better and better every single time he releases an album. This particular song has a hopeful tone and I really like it. I can definitely see what inspired him to write this one. Next track is A Victory of Love. It starts with a drone and some wonderful industrial tones and beats in an incredibly catchy 6-8 time signature, which is my favorite time signature of all time. I mean, how can you not love it? Let's just be real here. Very dancey with some cool shrieking synthesizers and great contrast with Ashton's breathy voice. Very sexy too. Again, a little brighter melodically, maybe even a little new wavy, but not that I'm complaining, of course. Take Me Home starts with some industrial noise and makes room for acoustic guitars sprinkled with a little bit of strings. It's just gorgeous. Again, it gave me serious goosebumps and yet was comforting at the same time. It's a little weird. It was very David Bowie-esque. Like, that was the first thing that I could think of with listening to this one. Another short but sweet song, but I really love it. The way he belts out the higher notes in the Passaggio Zone is incredibly controlled and precise without losing any emotion that is meant to be conveyed in this song, so it was very brilliantly done. Empty Garden is another softer piece that starts out with industrial noise to set the stage for instrumentation. I think that Ashton's voice really shines and shows off its agility in this particular song, and it really does so more than any other track, in my opinion, of course. This track is gorgeously minimalistic and melancholy, but then erupts with electric guitar and percussion toward the second half of the song. So Ashton, let me, let just, let me talk about his vocal technique here because it's really difficult for me to do a music review and not analyze the vocal technique because that's a huge part of what I do, you know, every day for my operatic training, okay? It's so hard for me to turn off that part of my brain. So he masterfully maneuvers the intervals between his chest voice and his falsetto range brilliantly in such a consistent way that I have never heard a non-operatically trained singer do before. So color me impressed. I feel like I spent a lot of time talking about his vocals on this song, especially considering how short it is, but I think Ashton's vocals deserve to be talked about in this very understated song. It was really just breathtaking. The next to last track is All Tomorrow's Saints, and it begins with a lovely drone and some great percussive beats and melodic synths. Another dancey one to help bring the album home. 
more brilliant maneuvering in his passaggio zone for the chorus sections really elevates the song to a new level. Brilliant guitar work, of course, to round out everything is just very captivating. The moments where it holds back just a little bit before it swells in the chorus are so meticulously and strategically placed that it's incredibly effective in adding sophisticated dynamics, shaping, and textures to this song. I like that it rounds out and ends with synthesizers and fades out to set up for the final track. This Alchemy is the last track on the album and it begins with softly shrieking, almost staticky sounding synthesizers, soft melodic guitar and electronic beats, a little piano, possibly a little bit of xylophone in there too. It was a very brilliant way to wrap up the album, very interestingly blended together and bound wonderfully by Ashton's voice. Ashton's voice is pure, luxurious, black velvet in this song, and it really warms your heart, really just hits you right here in the feels. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> Ashton will always be on my list of all-time favorite singers and most beautiful voices, both operatic and non-operatic. He really is extraordinary. I like it when the percussion enters for the last section of the song to finish it off. Gives your heart just one last chance to race a little bit before the album is over, and yet still leaves you just wanting more. This album, not unlike Ashton's other releases as The Awakening, was incredible. It really is difficult to find a bad one. And like I've said, Ashton has one of the most beautiful, sexy, deep, smooth, just incredible singing voices that is supported by great technique and that's one of the reasons why I love The Awakening so much. And even the music is unique, multi-dimensional, deep, fascinating, and sexy as well. It offers something amazing for fans of 90s and 2000s goth music, and especially nowadays for all of the new goth music coming out within the last few years. I will say this album felt very much like a revival of Tales of Obsolation and Absolution by The Awakening from the year 2009, which incidentally was the year that I discovered The Awakening when I was about 15 years old. <sighs> Boy, that feels like a long time ago but um, it felt updated, fresh, and new. If you're a big fan of that particular album, I think you'll really eat this one up, but if you're just a fan of The Awakening in general, this will be a must-have in your collection. You definitely won't be disappointed at all. So everyone, that being said, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. So I will have all of the relevant links for The Awakening in the description below so that you can check out The Awakening and support Ashton Knight as a musician because he really, really deserves it. He's incredible. And again, <laughs> every single day, I thank my lucky stars that I am friends with him and that he is just so generous. Oh god, I can't even. <laughs> oh, I'm fine, I promise. But yeah, not to sound cliche, but I just feel incredibly blessed. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that bell for notifications so that you can be notified every single time I make a video. And thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me every month, including my new patron, Rivendell Rambles. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you and I will see you guys later. Bye. Like a